My name is Nick Redwine, and I will be here discussing how we can end American dependency on fossil fuels. Now, does anybody know what this is? Well, it's a respiration mask, but we'll get to that later. It is safe to say a majority of the world is reliant on fossil fuels. Fossil fuels drive economies, are valuable global commodities, and are one of the most traded commodities. In fact, the number one most traded commodity in the world right now is oil. In 2016 alone, 92.2 million barrels of oil were produced in the world. In 2014, 1,400 million tons of coal, another fossil fuel, were traded too. Not only do they largely affect economies, fossil fuels are used to power cars. Oil is the lubricant that keeps your engine running. Petroleum-based fuels are what you put into your vehicles in order to be able to fuel the engine. And at least this is the case for most drivers, as only 1.2 million electric cars were used in, were in use in 2016 out of the 1 billion plus vehicles in use. Fossil fuels are also the main energy supplier around the world. In 2011, it was estimated that fossil fuels provide 82% of all the world's energy needs. Fossil fuels have seemingly, seemingly taken over and are nearly everywhere in every form. Because they are, largely, are large commodities in the global economy, the main energy source for transportation and the world's main energy supplier, it is fair to say that the world is dependent on fossil fuels. One of the biggest culprits of dependency on fossil fuels is the United States. As of now, the United States is the second largest oil producer only behind Saudi Arabia with 10.59 million barrels of oil a day. The United States is also the world's largest oil consumer and in 2013 it was the second largest coal producer and the largest coal consumer. America is also the largest producer of natural gas. Not only does the U.S. rely on fossil fuels economically, we are dependent on them as an energy source. Currently, the fossil fuels provide 63% of U.S. energy. So many ask, what is wrong with being dependent on fossil fuels? The answer to this question is the environmental damage caused by the use and extraction of the fossil fuels. Pollution of all forms are a result of this, and in fact, a study conducted in 2010 by the Environmental Protection Agency discovered that 79% of greenhouse gas emissions are caused by the use of fossil fuels alone. The air pollution created is tremendous, and with this statistic alone, it can be determined that there are numerous health risks associated with this. Some of these risks include COPD, increased susceptibility to infections, CHD, respiratory illnesses, and several cardiovascular diseases, just to name a few. This is one of the heavier yet widely unrecognized issues of using fossil fuels. Water pollution is also a consequence of using fossil fuels. When fossil fuels are burned, they release nitrogen oxides. Not only does this uh, pollute the air, nitrogen oxides aid in the creation of acid rain, and this rain will form runoff, polluting various bodies of water. Methods of extraction also create runoff, which pollutes water even further, an example of this being fracking. This is the hydraulic fracturing of rocks to oftentimes obtain oil and gas. The fracking fluid contains chemicals that are usually harmful to the environment. These chemicals, along with other debris, drain into bodies of water. This then negatively impacts the aquatic life, wildlife and can create further health problems for the natives of the surrounding communities. A societal cost is created by using fossil fuels, and the best solution for paying for this cost and ending American dependency on fossil fuels is the creation of a consumer-based carbon tax. A consumer-based car carbon tax is a direct tax on the carbon content of the fossil fuels. The three main types of fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas, would have three separate tax rates. The reason for this being each of these three types of fossil fuels contain a varying level of carbon in them. Because of this, the tax rate, rate would be based on the BTU heat units, which are units of heat, to properly reflect the actual carbon content of the fossil fuel. The Carbon Tax Center actually created their own carbon tax with estimate estimated rates per million BTU. The higher the price means the dirtier the fuel. By having it different set rates for each type of fossil fuel, it eliminates people's 
switching to the cheaper fossil fuel. Ultimately, research has shown that the tax will equate to an additional 15 to $25 on the electric bill for homeowners and 40 to $50 on the electric bill for business owners. Critics of the carbon tax claim that claim the tax will drive the poor even further into poverty. What's great about a tax, however, is it creates a tax revenue. The government can take this revenue and then assist the poor through food stamps or by divvying up an amount of this revenue and returning it in equal checks to the poor. The government could also lower taxes in other areas with this revenue. These options would make the carbon tax a feasible solution for the poor while still achieving the goal of wanting to reduce the use of fossil fuels. Even if some of the revenue was taken to provide assistance to the poor, there would still be large amounts of the revenue left with which the government can use to spend on a variety of things. The revenue could be used to invest in more programs to combat the use of fossil fuels. The government could use the tax revenue for investing in renewable energies or developing the electrical grid to be more renewable energy friendly. And this is what is so great about a carbon tax as it allows for further solutions to be created in more specific areas, creating a layered effect. What's even better is there are actual examples of the carbon tax working. In British Columbia, a carbon tax has been implemented. Not only have they seen a decrease in use of fossil fuels, they have seen an increase in jobs in renewable energy, further contributing to the end of fossil fuels. In conclusion, the carbon tax is the most feasible solution to end American dependency on fossil fuels. The tax is cost effective and overall affordable. A layered effect is created due to the tax revenue, making the tax seemingly foolproof. And lastly, there are examples of the tax being executed and actually being quite successful. And going back to these masks, if we continue our over-reliance on fossil fuels, these will become a part of our everyday life. Catch. I can't see you. Uh, Thank you.